Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're doing the May 2024 past paper, specifically the time zone one and the standard level one. Okay, let's get started. So as before, I'm going to give you three seconds and you can pause and think about it during that time just to make this video shorter. So starting off with question one, and you'll see a lot of these are repeated in the higher level if you looked at that video, uh, which I'll link up there if you're also interested. So the image shows the nucleus of a cell from the pancreas that is surrounded by endoplasmic reticulum. What describes this nucleus? Okay, three, two, and one. Okay, it contains chromatin, that's DNA, right? And it's surrounded by a double membrane, that makes sense. So it is not composed of highly folded internal membranes, that's just not true, it does not have internal membranes. It also does not contain ribosomes, that's the cytoplasm, right, outside the nucleus, and it also doesn't contain organelles. Once again, that's the cytoplasm, but it does contain DNA and has a double membrane, all right? Question two, which was also in the higher level paper, the image shows a single paramecium with food vacuoles that contain ingested cells of the unicellular green alga chlorella. What can be deduced about paramecium? Again, pause now in three, two, and one. It carries out heterotrophic nutrition, right? The It's telling us that it's eating something else. So that's uh, what heterotrophs do. It is. We do not know whether it's an autotroph. It could be, but the exercise doesn't say so. Uh, we don't know that it can't perform all of the functions of life, right? Again, nothing to indicate that, and also nothing to indicate that it's a prokaryote. The only thing we know is that it's eating another organism, therefore heterotrophic nutrition. Great. Okay, question three, and this one's the first one that's new. So the micrograph is from a dividing cell. What is shown in this image? Think about this one. I think it can be a little tricky. Um, three, two, and one. It's D. Why? Okay, so... It's not two condensed chromosomes consisting of four chromatids. Actually, it's one chromosome consisting of two chromatids, right? One here and then one here. Um, it's not from telophase in mitosis because if it were telophase of mitosis, they would be separated. So you would only see one of these. It's not from G1 in interface because that's before uh, DNA replication has happened. So again, you would only see one of these. Uh, but it could be from metaphase, right? So it can be when they're aligned in the center before they're separated to opposite poles. Great. Question four. The diagram shows the davson Danieli model of the cell membrane. How does this model relate to the fluid mosaic model? Once again, three, two, and one. It's B. Why? Okay, so the fluid mosaic model is the current one with the phospholipid bilayer and the proteins, which can be integral, right, or peripheral. So uh, it's B because, as we just said, the fluid mosaic model does include integral proteins. The Davson Danieli only includes this like sandwich, right? So proteins and then phospholipids. Um, so A is not true because again, both don't include a phospholipid bilayer between two layers of protein. That's only Davson Danieli. Uh, the fluid mosaic model does not show protein sandwiched. And then the Davson Danieli model um, includes a phospholipid bilayer. That's true, but the fluid mosaic model also does. So that's why it's B. Question five, how is a prokaryotic cell different from an eukaryotic cell? Again, this was in higher level. It's quite easy. Three, two, and one. Yeah, so eukaryotic cells have organelles, prokaryotes do not. I think that's quite straightforward. Question six, the diagram shows two molecules which can be linked by a condensation reaction. What would be the product of this reaction? Again, three, two, and one. Water and sucrose, why? Okay, in any condensation reaction, water is released, so that's a given. And then this is glucose over here, and this is fructose. When glucose and fructose get together, that forms sucrose, right? Maltose is formed by glucose and glucose, so not the case. Uh, dipeptide, these are not amino acids, right? Um, and with lactose, right? Again, this is fructose and glucose, um, so that will not form uh, lactose. Okay. Question seven, the graph shows the effect of limiting factors on the rate of photosynthesis. What can be concluded from the graph? Again, this was in higher level. So I'll let you think, think about this through. It's, it can be a bit tricky, I think. And in three, two, and one, it's B, Why? Okay, so if we look at it at a concentration of 0 0.1 and a low light intensity, temperature is the only limiting factor. Okay, there's nothing in this graph to suggest anything about temperature. So that's just not true. Um, however, as you can see at this CO2 concentration, at low light intensity, it's plateaued, right? The rate of photosynthesis. However, when you increase the light intensity, the rate of photosynthesis increases, showing that light intensity alone was the thing at fault. So it is the only limiting factor. That's why it's B, right? At 0, 0, 003, um, it's CO2 that's the limiting factor, right? Because when you increase CO2, 
without changing the light intensity, you get a higher rate of photosynthesis. Therefore, C is false because it's only CO2 concentration, not CO2 and temperature. And then saying that at a CO2 concentration above zero one, there are no lim limiting factors is just doesn't make sense because when you're here, again, you increase the high and the light intensity and you get a higher rate of photosynthesis. All right. So question eight, how do human muscle cells respond to intense exercise? Again, take some time to think in three, two, and one. Okay, so it's see why. A doesn't make sense. Why would they stop using oxygen? Actually, you need more oxygen, right, when you're doing intense exercise. Um, they produce smaller amounts of ATP in order to reduce the need for oxygen. Uh, that's not true. It's the opposite, right? They produce larger amounts of ATP and therefore they require more oxygen. C is true. So they produce lactate. They do anaerobic respiration, basically, right? Um, and D is false because D are the waste products of anaerobic respiration, but in bacteria, not in humans, okay? In humans, it's lactate. All right. Question nine. Watson and Crick worked out the 3D structure of DNA. What did the model they built show for the first time? This is tricky because these are all true. Um, yes, they're all true, but only one of them was shown by Watson and Crick. So this either you remember or you don't. So three, two, and one. It's D. Um, well, that's just a fact, right? They 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 figured out that it was a double helix and the two strands were anti-parallel. Uh, again, not much explanation there. You just need to remember. Great. Question 10. What describes the structure of proteins? Okay. Think about it. I think this is pretty easy. Three, two, and one. One and three. Okay. So the sequence of amino acids in all proteins is the same. Makes no sense because then all proteins would be the same, right? So two is false. Um, and then one is true. So proteins are made from amino acids linked together by peptide bonds, right? That's how you form a polypeptide and then it faults, becoming a protein. And then three, a protein may consist of more than one polypeptide. That's true, right? That's the quaternary structure of a protein, if it indeed does have more than one. Good. So question 11, what are the components of DNA and RNA? Okay, three, two, and one, D. Okay, so I think most of you probably guessed that it was between C and D, right? So DNA is deoxyribose, um, ribose, uh, RNA is ribose, it's in the name, right? And then uh, both of them have adenine, whereas um, uracil is only in RNA, all right? Question 12, what is the role of DNA polymerase during DNA replication? Again, think now, pause, and three, two, and one. So it adds nucleotides. Again, most of you probably guessed that, but it's to the growing strand, right? Otherwise, uh, so the template strand is the one that's being copied. It does not need new nucleotides added to it. It's the one you're, you're copying to make a new one, right? Instead, you need to add nucleotides to the growing strand to, again, grow, grow a new strand of DNA. All right. Question 13, and this was in higher level as well, Huntington's disease is a neurodegenerative genetic disorder caused by a dominant allele. What can be concluded from this pedigree chart? Again, this will take some time to think through, so make sure to do that. And in three, two, and one, it's C, Y. Okay, the strategy I recommend for these questions, okay, is to think, is the op could the opposite be true, all right? So for example, for A, Huntington's disease is sex-linked since most affected individuals are male. You have to ask yourself, is it possible that even if most indiv affected individuals are male, which is true, it's not sex-linked? And yes, it is, right? So it being most male, uh, the affected individuals, I mean, uh, is indicative, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's sex-linked, right? So that's just not good enough. B, it's not sex-linked since IV-1 and IV-3 are not affected. Okay, is it possible that it is sex-linked even if IV-1 and IV-3 are not affected? So if we look at IV-1 here and IV-3 here, right, if it were sex-linked, right, the father would have to be little xy, right, since this is dominant. The mother could either be big x, small x, or big x, big x, right? Um, however, it's still possible that these two males, IV1 and IV3, would have gotten the Y from their dad and a small X from their mom if she were heterozygous, okay? Work this out on paper. It's way easier to see it that way. But so B is incorrect because it can still be sex-linked, right? Um, but if we look at C, so if we look at 3-3, three, three, this individual over here, is it possible that it is sex-linked? Again, we look at the reverse. If it's sex-linked, the dad has a uh, big X, Y, and the mom has to have a small x, small x, meaning the male, the son, right, 3, 3, cannot have it because the mom wouldn't have that dominant allele, meaning it couldn't have passed it onto the male if it is sex-linked, right? Therefore, it can't be sex-linked, and C is correct. And then D um, is just false because 
and IV2 is a carrier since individual 32 is affected. I mean, that like we don't know that, right? That would depend a lot on, again, whether it's sex linked or not. So that just doesn't make sense. All right. Question 14, which stage of DNA profiling involves the polymerase chain reaction? All right, three, two, and one, B. Okay, so uh, it's not for extracting the DNA sample. Remember, the PCR is to replicate DNA many, many times to get a lot more quantity, right? So it's not to separate the fragments. That's another thing, and that's gel electrophoresis, and it's not during incubation with labeled probes, right? That's, um, you can do that before um, PCR. The PCR is actually replicating it. Okay. Which gas is the main contributor to the greenhouse effect? Ozone, methane, nitrogen oxide, or water vapor? And a lot of you will get this wrong. So three, two, and one. It's water vapor, okay? Sounds counterintuitive. Uh, it's not human made. Uh, well, it's not human cost, right? That's why it's not mentioned as much. But because of the sheer quantity of it, it's actually the one with the biggest effect. So now you know, okay? Um, question 16. In a stable natural ecosystem, how is the supply of nutrients and energy maintained? Three, two, and one. Okay, so nutrients are cycled, right? So the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle. Uh, however, energy, there's a constant flow of because of the sun, right? We constantly get energy and then energy is lost throughout the food chain. So this re uh, review ecology, if you don't remember this, right? But energy from the sun is not recycled, right? It's not cycled through the, through the food chains. It's lost. So it's a constant flow. Okay. Question 17, how are the individuals in an ecological community related to each other? Three, two, and one. They belong to different populations. That's the definition of a community, right? It's a collection of different populations, yeah? Um, so the rest are just not true, right, factually. So they don't necessarily belong to the same species or to the same trophic level um, or populations composed of many species, right? That's It can happen, but it's not necessarily true. But C is... How do autotrophs living in an aquatic ecosystem obtain carbon? Good question. So three, two, and one. Okay, so it's diffusion of car So carbon dioxide can be dissolved in water, so diffusion of that, and then hydrogen carbonate ions. So um, it's not by feeding on heterotrophs, right? Because they're autotrophs, <laughs> that just beats the definition. Uh, they don't active transport the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere because they're not anywhere near the atmosphere. And they also don't ingest organisms because again, that would be heterotrophy. So it's through uh, diffusion, right? Question 19, in a natural classification, what do all members of a genus have in common? Again, remember taxonomy, right? Quite a few questions on this in this paper. So three, two, and one. So they all evolved from the same common ancestor because they're in the same evolutionary group, right? They don't have the same binomial name because the binomial name includes the species, which differs. Therefore, they also don't belong to the same species. And they, for C is true for species, but not for genuses, okay? Question 20, the cladogram shows the evolutionary relationships between a number of animal groups. What can be concluded from this cladogram? Again, I think quite straightforward. Take a look at it. Three, two, and one. It's B. Okay, why? Because crocodiles over here are more closely related to birds, right? They're much closer on the cladogram than to whales, which are all the way over here, right? So they're in a completely different branch, right? If you look at the other answers, they just are not true, right? So for example, if we look at C, they don't share a common ancestor. Yes, they do. This one over here, right at the very back. And then shark and tuna evolved later than humans. Uh, no, they actually evolved beforehand, right? They're earlier in the cladogram. Okay, question 21, which was also in higher level. So a central idea in the theory of evolution is that species may evolve gradually over time from a common ancestor. Which ex statements explain the pattern of evolution seen in the diagram? Okay, and three, two, and one. One and three. Why not two? Okay, because changes that happen throughout the lifetime of an individual are not heritable, right? If you get a wound, that's not passed on to your kids. However, there's always genetic variability in a common ancestor, right, between different members of a species, and changes in beak shape that are genetic are heritable, right? So it's one and three. Okay, question 22, a dichotomous key. Again, this will take a little while, but go through it, and it should be pretty easy, I think. Three, two, and one. Okay, so if we look at one, animal is symmetrical, mollusca, right? Yes, it is. So you can cut it in half. So go to two. It has radial symmetry. It does not, right? Um, it has bilateral symmetry. So you go to three. It has an anus. It does. So you go to four. Has a visibly segmented body. No, it does not, right? Um, 
An, a good example of a visibly segmented body is the annelida, right? The worms, which have rings, but the octopus in this case, for example, does not. So it's B. Okay. Question 23. The diagram shows how heart sounds are aligned with the changes in blood pressure in the cardiac cycle. What can be deduced about the cost of the heart sounds? Okay, again, this can be a little tricky. So think about it. Three, two, and one. Okay, so it's the closing of the atrioventricular valves. Okay, so what you see before the sound is basically uh, blood is being pumped from the atrium to the ventricle. So that's why the pressure increases right in the ventricle. But then what you want to ensure is that the blood does not flow back to the atrium. So you close the atrioventricular valves, which makes this noise over here, right? Afterwards is when you then pump the blood into the artery from the ventricle, leading to this huge spike in pressure in the ventricle and in the aorta, right? But before that is the atrioventricular valves, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Question 24. What property of antibiotics makes them effective in the treatment of infectious diseases? Okay, I think this is pretty simple. Three, two, and one. They block metabolic pathways in prokaryotes, right? Because you want them to target something that's not found in humans, because otherwise they would kill you. Uh, so they don't stimulate the production of antibodies, right? Um, so they're not immune-related. They don't block the metabolic processes in viruses because they're for bacteria, and they don't inhibit mitosis in eukaryotes because, again, that would kill our cells, and we're trying to kill the bacteria. Great. Question 25. Which is true of type 1, type 2 pneumocytes and phagocytes? 3, 2, and 1. Okay, so type 1 pneumocytes are, an, are they do gas exchange, so they line most of the alveolus, right? Um, then type 2 pneumocytes are more sparsely found and they produce surfactant. Remember, that helps the alveoli not collapse onto themselves because of the pressure changes. And then uh, phagocytes just ingest pathogens. Remember, that's from the immune system, right? Um, and they're found in most tissues. Great. Question 26. What distinguishes capillaries from other blood vessels? Three, two, and one. They're thin and they have permeable walls, right? Because remember, they have to uh, allow exchange of materials between tissue and blood. So they uh, they don't have valves, that's veins, right? They don't have a thin layer of muscle at all. Uh, they're too thin and they have a thin layer of elastic fiber. Again, no, they're too thin to have that, those things. Question 27, again from higher level. What explains the membrane potential at Y in the trace? Three, two, and one. So the potassium channels open and allow potassium ions to move outside of the axon membrane. So what you're seeing at Y, right, is that actually it's after the action potential. So membrane potential is going back down to baseline or actually below baseline. And remember, that's through the potassium channels, right? When it reaches the action potential, that's through the sodium. So afterwards, it's the potassium and then it gets de uh, re regulated again to start all over again. Okay, so question 28. What are the functions of female reproductive hormones? Three, two, and one. This is pretty factual. I find this topic really, really difficult personally, but so it's estrogen and progesterone promote the development of female reproductive organs in the embryo. Okay, so B is wrong because FSH and LH are not produced by the ovary. They're produced by the pituitary gland. C is wrong because estrogen and progesterone are released by the ovary and not the pituitary gland, right? And then D is false because FSH and LH do not promote the development of female reproductive organs in the embryo, but they... Um, what they do is they promote estrogen um, production, which does that. Okay, question 29. The diagram shows monomers formed by the digestion of macromolecules in the small intestine. Which monomers could result from the digestion of an unsaturated fat? Okay, and three, two, and one. It's D. Why? Okay, one cannot be. Why? Well, because we're talking about fats here, right? And Monomer 1 is not a fat. Um, it's actually, I don't know if it's glucose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's glucose, yep. Um, and then monomer 2 um, is an amino acid, right? But monomer 3, 4, and 5 could all be part of a fatty acid. So monomer 3 is a glycerol, right? Monomer 5 is an unsaturated um, chain. And then monomer 5 is saturated. But however, uh, they could all be part of an unsaturated fat because as long as one of the chains is unsaturated, the whole fatty acid is. Uh, so that's why uh, they could all result from that. And finally, question 30. What is the function of the pancreas in 3, 2, and 1? To release glucose, uh, glucagon, sorry, when blood glucose levels are low. So it releases insulin when blood glucose levels are high and glucagon when they're low. That's why C is wrong. 
uh, they don't secrete an endopeptidase, so D is wrong, and they also don't control the rate of metabolism. So that's the thyroid gland uh, that releases thyroxine, not the pancreas. Okay, so that's the end of this paper. I'll see you next week for the next one. And if you have any questions, do leave them in the comments. Goodbye, everyone.